How's it going everybody? So I bought this trailer for my mariner. If y'all gonna make one of these for your mariner or whatever, do not buy this three quarter uh, plywood because when you fold it over it is not gonna collapse right. It's it's gonna it's gonna be too big for this thing to fold. So what I'm gonna have to do find somewhere is either make two holes higher here so that way it brings this whole bracket higher to where I have the right spacing so when it folds or I'm gonna have to find another bracket that just hopefully has a higher um, higher spot for this bolt to go through so I have a lot of room when it folds so my my faults do not buy this big yeah it's stronger got it but it's not gonna fit when you try to fold this trailer fold it over so what I would do is get a half inch half inch will work really good because all you have is when it folds from this beam to the other beam is an inch and a quarter so you do the math three quarter of an inch plus three quarter of an inch is an inch and a half plus my carpet that's going to go on here so it's not going to fit letting you know all right so what i did here is <clears throat> some people were saying that you have to you know these bolts get in the way right here of course it sticks up it sticks up so the board doesn't lay flat here because you have these little ledges right here that doesn't make it even you know it's going to be like some kind of sag only about a few millimeters but what i plan on doing is when i put bolts through here is i put a washer on top to make up for that spacing you know so that way it can sit right and what i did here is i pre-drilled holes i had this board laid it on here and i tied it down with um i don't know what you call it you just swilled it and it, it collapsed the thing together not c-clamps something else so the way i took care of this part right here is hold on I just took a spade you know and I made a little just a little pocket for that that bolt head to fit in so that way I ain't got to worry about that one you know taking it out and putting it back through the whole board so I just left that hanging right there and only because I already have a hole here for one carriage bolt a hole here for one another carriage bolt so when I laid this board this whole board on top of this trailer I just took account of you know all the holes I had put you know all I did was lay it on there, tied it down, went under it with a little pencil, you know, one that you can fit so you can make a perfect circle, um, and pre-drilled holes into it. So, yeah, this thing's going to go under with carriage bolts, that way, you know, it doesn't make any, any, um, sharp, sharp edges. But before I do all that, I'm going to carpet it first, and then I'm going to put in the carriage bolts. Being that the carriage bolts are round up top. Yeah, you know, I ain't got to worry about it nicking anything on the boat. I may just sand these down and you just leave it alone. Who knows? But my plan is to get keel rollers. And if you don't know what the keel rollers are, they're, they're on the boat trailers. And what there are is just little rubber rolls that guide the boat onto boat trailers. But the way mine's going to do for the mariner, I'm going to have an 8 inch one here, 8 inch one there, and then four more on that side spaced out evenly so that way when the mariner gets on here it just you know it slides on there and you know the Q rollers it won't I won't have to worry about it being on the board you'll see when I get there I'm just waiting for the parts to come in all right so here I am I'm uh gluing the uh, carpet to the uh, the boards for my trailer here and what I did was I painted the board with a well supposedly an exterior paint supposed to be like water resistant you know cracking fading whatever you call it so anyway I know y'all know how to cut your own boards and all and cut your own carpet to size so I got a 4x8 uh, 3 quarter plywood and then I had a 4x8 well not 4x8 but 6x8 um, outdoor carpet so what I did is I cut them in half and you're not going to get all the way around unless you cut the board shorter but if you cut the board shorter you're going to have shorter ends on the sides and probably have a hard time putting the screws in. So I just cut it in half. You know there's going to be some, some parts showing here on the side but they sell aluminum L brackets which I'm going to use anyway so it's going to cover here. It's going to cover the seam up. They're only like five bucks four feet. So 
what I did is I bought this glue off of Lowe's. Um, it's actually working pretty good. It's working pretty good. I've glued it, I sprayed it on here, and you know, it is coming up a little bit, but it gets stronger as I pull it. And only because earlier I pulled it here, I didn't wait for it to dry, so I gotta respray that. But as you can see, it's holding down pretty good on all sides. So I'm just showing you what I used, where I put it. I glued half, and then I folded it over. Now I'm about to glue this half, and then spray on some glue on this as well, and then fold this over. Almost finished, huh? Front part's a little warped. I don't know why I did that after I cut it. <clears throat> Got roofy nails. Why I did roofy nails instead of staples? I don't know. I guess I just changed my mind. As you can see, is where the aluminum L strip is going to go across. All across there. Ah. Same for here. On both sides. <clears throat> and same for the front. And when all this gets bolted down, it should level out. Alright, the other thing I have to do is find the holes, which here's one. I'm gonna put a little X here with my uh, razor. I like to put the bolt through it and all I gotta do is feel across. There's another hole right there. Another one right there. And I already know where they are. Let's just go all the way through and find them. Alright, as you can see I got everything put on. Everything's in order. Everything fits perfectly. The only uh, issue I have, it's not much of an issue. But I don't know if you can see it here along the far part it's just like I don't know maybe a quarter of an inch higher on this end maybe it's due to the warp and whatnot but um I got the carriage bolts in you know they went here quite nice you know they're kind of like flush almost but you know there's always that tip but I'm not, I'm not gonna do anything with them I'm gonna leave them as is but you know it, it's it's good look at that awesome work here what I didn't include were the middle bolts and the reason I don't have one in the middle is because the nut kind of stripped the bolts on so you know I'm asked out of two of them that would be in the middle so you know those are still pending when I go back to Lowe's and get another bolt for it but as you can see I mean this trailer is pretty much leveled you know it's, it's even all the way around everything fits nicely the back end is somewhat heavy um, of course because you got a three-quarter ply which I left it up now oh yeah and what I'm gonna try to do now is see if it'll go over which I doubt it will uh, it's still going Alright, as you can see, it's not going all the way over. And I heard some cracking along this end of the ply. So, it's, it's not going to close like I wanted. But you know, I already knew that. I didn't want to spend another 20 bucks getting another board and recutting it. But as you can see, go with the 5 8 or the half inch. With those, you will have no issue. So, I'm going to go ahead and fold this back. There you go. I'm not sure what kind of damage it did here, which I doubt it did any. Alright, so what I have here are brackets from Lowe's, which are $2 a piece. It'd be $1.80 something. And over here, I have a 5 8 rod. It's only 5 bucks. Right, if you buy them online, they want to charge you like 15 just for like a 12 inch rod, but here I got um three foot here for five bucks out of those so i got two of those as well as these q rows which are 10 inches 
So you figure I can get three rods out of one of those, this, and two L brackets. Rather than a whole set, they want to charge you 70 bucks, probably 50 at the most, just for a complete one set. And then I got these uh, these end ties, which basically pop on the ends, that way the rods don't fall out. So as you can see, they go on here, and they rotate freely. And you can always cut them to size all the way down with the uh, hacksaw. Alright, so everything goes to plan. You know, this is going to go through the bracket. One of these brackets, it fits through nicely. I just got to do it more with my Dremel tool. The one I got right there. Um, like so. And there's kill row roller. Let's go through to the other end. Taking forever. Hopefully I can edit some of this out. Alright. This end will go. You get the point. Bam. So now I have a complete kill row for 11 i say about a dollar something plus two dollars each not bad all right so here's the trailer on the uh after fishing but i'm going to show this video just like if it was before we left but as you can see it's uh it's put together finally i don't have to mess with it put it in pieces in back of the truck it's just going to stay on here just like this A little windy right now. I don't know if it's making that noise. So as you can see, it's just, it fits nicely. Um, the greener's a little bit wider on the sides for the tire wells, which is another reason why I want to put the keel rollers. But I also had to offset it a little bit. I'm not sure if you see it with those brackets. So I had to offset it a little bit just so it can be somewhat on there. Inflating the middle also takes pressure off the. Uh, center being dragged down by the weight. Um, and the same the other side all the way down. But yeah, the carpet, yeah, even though it's not touching the carpet, it, it made, it's going to make pulling this thing up really easy as you see in the after video. So yeah, no more putting together this thing. That's it. 